life. What a mess. Mess on whose part? Surely we can't rightly charge God with the mess, for Scripture says God made man upright. Well then, the mess must be ours. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Their ways are corrupt. Violence, pain, drunkenness, divorce, abuse, godlessness, emptiness, no restraint, no vision, no direction, no purpose, no joy, no hope, suicide. Yes, we are suffering the consequences of a godless generation. Scripture says it is not in man to direct his own steps. Jesus said Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have a better way of living. I see the Lord. What do you see in life? In life, some see light, while some see darkness. Some see hope, while some see misery. Some see a pathway, while some see huge mountains. Some see obstacles, while some see opportunities. Some see battles, while some see victories. Some see faith, while some see fear. What is the difference? Simple. The difference is what you're looking for in life. Because what you are looking for in life will determine what you see, especially in life's adversities. Tell me if this is true or not. Someone can actually be looking at an object, yet seeing something other than the object. That's called daydreaming. At one point or another, each human being have done this. You can be looking at an object, yet failing to see the value in the object. That's called overlooking. Somebody can look at something as a piece of junk while another person looks at the same thing and sees a treasure. In this current pandemic, most people are seeing sickness, poverty, setbacks, and even death. They see fair. They sleep fair, they wear fair, they think fair, they even live fair. Most people in the world today are alive, but not really living because of their preoccupation with COVID. There comes a time in our lives, especially as Christians, if you say you're a Christian, when we must choose to see the Lord in everything, it's a choice. We must choose to see the Lord in everything. When we make that choice, we are at peace no matter what. Only when we make that choice, despite what we see happening in the world. I'm simply going to take a couple examples of people in the Bible that saw the Lord in everything. Maybe you and I somehow can take the example from them that no matter what we hear on the news, no matter what we see around us, we make the choice to see the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 through 3, it was the year King Uzziah died. This is the prophet Isaiah. It says it was the year that King Uzziah died. What a tragic year. 
and the whole country depended on him, looked to him for comfort, for protection, for provision. And all of a sudden he died. And even the prophet Isaiah was struck deeply. Why? Because the enemy power called Assyria. The moment they heard King Uzziah died, they started to plan to come in and attack Judah. And it was a fearful moment for everyone. The prophet Isaiah said that very year when we were fearful, when we were down, where, when we felt there was no hope, that same year, he said, I saw the Lord. It all depends what you're looking for in life. If you think the government have the answer, you'll find out soon that they don't. I say this with respect. If you think the vaccine is the answer, you'll soon find out it's not. People thought the king was the answer. And they found out that he died. And a super world of power was a coming against them. But in that tragic, dark, fearful moment, God gave the prophet Isaiah a revelation. And he recounts it to us. He said in that tragic year, I saw the Lord. And then he describes briefly what he saw. He says God was sitting on a lofty throne. That word lofty means higher than high. In example, when I saw him, Nothing was higher than him. Nothing was above him. Everything was beneath him. God. In other words, I saw God in complete control. Then he continues. He says the train of his robe filled the temple. I think the best way you'll understand and the quickest way you'll understand what the train of his robe might look like. If you've ever seen a woman getting married, you will see a long train behind them on their wedding dress. So much so that they're walking and somebody way back there can step on that piece of garment. He says, I saw the Lord. Above everything, everything beneath him. And then I saw the sanctuary, the temple of God. He says, and when I saw the temple of God, I noticed that his robe completely filled the temple. Well, where do you and I gather? Isn't it the sanctuary? Isn't it the temple? He says, I saw the Lord covering completely the temple where his people gather. Yes, it was a dark year, he says. Yes, we were fearful. But God showed me that he is in complete control, that he is in the midst of his people. He covers every single area. That brought me to remembrance of Psalms 133 verse 2 and 3 says, The anointing oil, that is symbolic of the Holy Spirit and His power. It says the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head, that ran down to his beard. Picture it with me. The oil started flowing. The anointing, the power started flowing upon the head. But it was draining down to the beard. And then it said onto the border of his robe. The train of his robe. The hem of his robe. Then notice what it says. There is where the Lord pronounced his blessing. 
So Isaiah said, I saw that his robe filled the temple. Here it says, there in the robe, the border of the robe that filled the temple, there is where the Lord pronounced his blessing. It all depends what you're looking for in life. Isaiah said, I learned that I was looking at the wrong thing and seeing the wrong thing. God showed me he is above everything. Everything is beneath him. And then he showed me that he was among his people. But more than that, he concluded by saying, the whole earth is filled with his glory. The word glory is presence and power. Manifest presence and power. The tangibility, the touchability, the connectability, the reachability of God's presence and power. He says the whole earth is filled with God's glory. Well, the last time I checked, you and I are on earth. The last time I checked, coronavirus and COVID is on the earth. The Bible says God's power fills the earth. I see the Lord. Isaiah says, I see the Lord. I was trembling. I was fearful. I was tormented. I thought I was defeated when King Uzziah died. But maybe he needed to die for me to learn that he was not the ultimate power. God is the ultimate power. You see, whatever we trust in besides God will be tested. Will be shaken. Because God wants us to see him in everything. Psalms 23 verse 4 and 5. Even, this is King David. Even when I must walk through the darkest valley. I don't know how often you read your Bible. I don't know if you read your Bible at all. But if you have ever read the Old Testament. You'll find out that King David was a man that was truly tested. King David was a man that came under attack from his closest friend to the distant lands. King David had to sleep under the stars of heaven many nights. Now for you and I that doesn't mean anything because if we sleep under the star we're probably on the beach. But King David sleeping under the stars meant wild beasts around and his enemies hot pursuing him David said though I walk through the darkest valley I will fear no danger why for you are with me I suggest to you David is saying I see the Lord in the valley I see the Lord when they threaten me I see the Lord when I'm fearful of the wild beasts, I see the Lord. When sickness come upon my body, I see the Lord. When disease threaten the whole world, I see the Lord. When my finances are low, I see the Lord. When my marriage is not working well, I see the Lord. When everything is going wrong, I see the Lord. King David said, I will fear no evil. For one reason, he says, because God, you are with me. Which God are we talking about? The God that Isaiah said, nothing was above him. Everything was under his feet. The God that is in the midst of his people. The God that has his power and glory flowing through the whole earth. That's the God that David said, I choose. To fear not, because Lord, you are with me. You see, the more you tune in to media, the less of God you'll remember. Because the media makes you feel, at times, that they have the answer. 
David said, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Then notice what he says. You refresh my head with oil. Oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, the power and the glory of God. He says, you refresh my head with your anointing and with your power. Psalms 91 verse 5 and 6. The psalmist says, don't be afraid. Easier said than done, right? We can say to each other, don't be afraid. But that doesn't take care of the matter at all. It's not easy not to fail. Yet the psalmist says, don't be afraid of the terrors of the night. Everything in yellow pertains to Satan. Don't be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day, do not be terrified of the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Don't be afraid. Don't be terrified. Don't let the enemy scare you. Don't let him think he, let him, let you think he is in control. Isaiah said, when I saw him, nothing was above him. Everything was under him. His presence filled the temple where his children gather. He says, and when I looked further, everything on earth was saturated with God's glory. People might say, well, how come I don't see God? Because you're looking at the wrong thing. Psalms 91 verse 7 and 8. Though a thousand die at your side, and 10,000 are dying around you. The word 10,000 means infinity. Countless people dying. Too many to count. The psalmist says, these evils will not touch you. The word touch does not mean it won't afflict you. It means it won't take you out. It won't kill you. It says, just open your eyes. And see how the wicked are punished. Verse 11 of Psalms 91, the psalmist says, For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. You see, I want to suggest to you, and I take this primarily from the account of Job. When Satan wanted to strike Job, God said, I give you permission, but do not touch him. In other words, do not kill him. You see, the devil would have killed Job. The devil's intention was not just to give him sores and let him suffer. His intention was to kill him. You know, when the devil comes against us and he brings suffering and harm, I just want to remind you, he is not there just to see you suffer. He wants to kill you. But God has given us his angels. And those very angels stop him from killing us when he wants to kill us. Verse 15 of Psalms 91. God says, when they call on me, I will answer. You see, when God answers, things change. Might not change for the world because they don't believe. But when you call on the Lord, things change. The Bible says, I will be with them. My brothers and sisters, if you look hard enough, you'll see the Lord. You'll see him with you. You'll know that the enemy and all his diseases cannot take you out until the Lord calls you home. I see the Lord. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. It's time for us to start to see the Lord. It's time for us to stop listening to what Facebook fans have to say, what Channel 5 has to say, what CNN has to say, what Fox News has to say. It's time to see the Lord in our midst. If your finances have been struck, call on the Lord. He will be with you in trouble. 
If sickness is on your body, call on the Lord. He will be with you in trouble. It's time to start to see the Lord in the midst of our troubles. Psalms 91 and verse 1 tells us how this becomes a reality. And it's very simple, yet it's a choice. The psalmist says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Look at it again. Many promises in Psalms 91. He will give his angels charge over us. The Bible says he will be with us. He will rescue us. The Bible tells us how this is possible. How do you find peace where there's turmoil? How do you find abundance where there is lack? How do you find healing and health where there is sickness and disease? The Bible says those who live in the Most High. Church on Sunday will not cut it. Thank you for coming. I enjoy having you here. But coming to church on Sunday will not cut it. God has got to become the lover of your soul. You've got to connect with him on a daily basis. You've got to live in God and not just visit God. You've got to live in God and let him live in you and not just let him visit you. It has to be a daily thing where you commune with him and where you find strength in him. The Bible says when you do that, and that's a choice. It's a choice. We might say, Pastor, I get up too early and I go to bed too late. That's your business. That's your business choice. And that's why you're busy and you're failing in life. Because you have to make the choice to live in God. When you live in God and everybody else is in turmoil, you have rest. You have to live in Him. You got to open your Bible every day. You got to put on your worship every day. You got to pray every day. When you do that, it doesn't matter what the news says, how bad the situation is. You will walk around like you're crazy because God told you, you have rest. Let them run around like rats figuring things out. You take my rest upon you. The Bible says in, chapter, in verse 9, it says, if you make, do you see the word if? Means it's a choice. God won't force you. I won't force you. The Bible says, if you make the Lord your refuge. What, what does the word refuge mean? It's a place where you hide. It's a place where you go where you're worn out and torn and you find strength. And you're revived. The Bible says if you make the Lord your refuge. It says if you make the most high your dwelling place. That's how you can be in rest. In times like this. That's how you can see the Lord. In times like this. Psalms 91 verse 14 and 16 says. The Lord says. Who says this? The Lord. Remember who the Lord is? The one. That is above everything. The one which has everything underneath him. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. Do you love the Lord? If you love the Lord, God says, I'll rescue you. Don't worry about it. Don't be fearful. Don't be timid. Don't be shy. Don't be terrified. I will rescue you. You see, your neighbor might say that, but you know he can't do it. But when God says, I'll rescue you, every devil have to bow. King of glory is coming in. I'm coming to get my beloved. I will protect those who trust in my name. And the Bible says I will reward them with a long life. Acts chapter 2 verse 25. I like what David said. King David said this about Jesus. I see the Lord. He is always with me. No wonder the man lived a long life. No wonder the man was wealthy till he died. No wonder the man overcome every struggle in life. 
No wonder when the world was turning upside down, it had to turn right side up again for him. He says, because I see the Lord, he is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. Romans chapter 8, verse 38, 37 through 39. Despite all these things, like COVID, like the world system crashing right in front of our eyes, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Notice it didn't say who died for us. Because the only reason he died is because he loves us. Then Paul says, I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. Listen, the man is not talking theology, you know. You go and you read about Paul. Dear Lord, this man had suffering incomparably. This man saw death before his face too many times to count. And yet he said, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death or life, neither angels or demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's holy love. Glory to God. Don't seek his power. Don't seek his glory. Don't seek his provision. Seek his love. He'll never depart from you. Getting ready to close here. Revelation 12, 11. And they have defeated him, the enemy, the devil. They have defeated him by the blood of the lamb. That's the shed blood of Jesus. By their word of their testimony, they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. You see, that's where the problem comes in. People are afraid to die. Do you know that if you're not afraid to die, you don't have any worries? I want to suggest to you live your life for Jesus so that if he calls you tonight, you're happy. If he calls you tomorrow, you're happy. Or if he calls you 50 years from now, you're happy. It's when you hold on to life that you lose it. But when you lose your life for the sake of Christ, you've just found it. I close with this. 2 Corinthians 5.8 says, yes. We are fully confident and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies for then we will be at home with the Lord. The day you breathe your last breath as a Christian, you're with the Lord Jesus Christ. I see the Lord. Do you see the Lord? 